This is Chris Lavin from Extreme Polishing Systems and we are here today. We're on day number four with our friends Pascal and Christopher that are out of Uganda, Africa. And uh, we welcome you guys again to the show here on YouTube. And today we're gonna be doing something. We've, right now we've got in your particular slab. Tell, tell us about what you've done to your slab so far, Pascal. Um, when we walked in, this slab was really bad. Um, probably several years we have used. Yeah, so we can kind of show, um, we, we want you to get a little scan of the floor so you can kind of show them the floor that they're talking about. Very dirty floor with a lot of paint and crud on it, correct? All right. So what we did is um, we came in with um, with um, with some metal diamonds and um, you know started uh, polishing the floor and um, we went from a, a 30 um, 30 grit 30, 30 grit 30, 30 30 metal and um, then we did a, a 120 a 70 and a 120 and um, as we went in um, we started seeing some aggregate um, the floor started getting some sheen and um, it looks a whole lot better than when we first did it. So um, we're really excited to see what the end product will look like. Okay. So um, we're so preparing to put a flag of Uganda down here. So um, I think it's going to turn out really nice. Awesome. Yeah. So right now they've gone. Uh, the first part of the process always is you're going to metal bond grind your floor. We went with 30s, 70s, and 120s. If you ever have blue, thin set, or mastic on the floor like we did the other day. We use the PCDs, which is the polycrystalline diamond, uh, to remove thin set, grout, and also glue. Okay, because we removed glue yesterday. Um, the guys have been here, they're having a lot of fun. I think you guys are getting a pretty good experience. I'm kind of explaining to you how you go out and sell the product. Have you learned a little bit as far as like how to market your product, Christopher? Yeah, we've actually gotten some skills on how to sell the product. So you have to be aggressive, you go out and look for the, um, the possible customers, you go out to the mall, you go out to the hospitals, and stuff like that. So one thing I learned from this is um, he's an out man, he goes out and pursues uh, his customers. Yes, I do. I'm a very actively, I would say, passive-aggressive salesperson, uh, as there are many people that are out there that, that need this product. I mean, we've. We've gone and we've seen uh, furniture stores, we've seen fire departments so far, we've seen some residential homes, we went and saw a Lamborghini dealership. So there's many opportunities out there, not just here in Florida, but where you're at, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know about polished concrete. It's a great business, it's, a, it's, just, it's just in the very beginning, guys. And, and if you're sitting out there and you're wondering like, what am I gonna do for a living? Uh, your, your field before was doing what? Um. Um, engineering, um, our engineering okay. software. So you engineer software in front of a desk a lot? Yep. Yeah. Right? And you're eight hours a day, eight to ten hours a day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And thinking about a change, a possible change. Yeah, yeah. it is possible. Yeah. Um, I mean this looks really exciting. Um, it's great to be out there and um, just being able to see something going from nothing to um, something really bright and vibrant and interesting. Um, I'm really I'm excited to see that final product. Yes, I am. Both of these guys are very excited. They haven't been able to sleep because they were thinking about what that final floor is going to look like so that everybody back in Africa can see exactly what you guys can do when you go back there with the system. So anyways, we're going to go and we're going to start to color this floor. This floor, we are going to take Schofield color and we're going to go with the beach sand as our base. And we're going to come back with the Cuban coffee uh, extreme polishing systems product and we're going to do a little spritzer of that on top of that uh, along with the African flag which is yellow, red, black and it's got a beautiful like stork. It's a crested crane. What's it called? A crested crane. Okay so it's a crane. It's, not, it's in the middle of the flag so we're going to do that. Um, so why don't you guys enjoy and watch what we do. Here we got Dr. Jimmy getting ready to tape off the logo, and Jimmy's going to explain to you as he goes what he's doing and why. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get on that side. So we're just going to tape this all the way across, and that's so it doesn't move. 
because if you put a little piece like this here, trying to save your tape and don't over there, it'll move. This way, it, it won't be able to move. It stays right there. So I usually put two. One is more than enough. Go all the way across in the center. And uh, we're just gonna peel, peel this off and start taping it together. You're gonna help me get on that side right there, all the way across from me. This is pretty easy because uh, it doesn't have too many details. So you're gonna grab both ends and just peel careful out. peel it out. Now, now just nice and easy, we're just gonna peel all the way back. All the way back, all the way back. Till we get to the tape, once we're there, we grab a knife. Get the exacto blade out. And we just we can just cut it right across here. So at this point you're removing the uh, paper back. And save it, we're gonna save that. Now you're gonna grab there's two points right there. And you're gonna easy up slowly on yep. it. Nice and easy. And I'm just gonna go. The most important thing is you got a lot of stuff in there. Some stuff is. Where's your tack ball? I did clean it. Some reason, you know what? It's probably blue right in this. Uh, we'll clean this other side, so it's okay. So now you can peel this back. And Chris Razor is here. Yep. Mr. Razor, back from his trip from North Carolina. Howdy, howdy. All right. So you're gonna. Hey, Chris. Right, nice and easy. Nice and easy, slow, 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 slow. Watch out here especially. This is where all the detail is. You want to make sure all that stays where it stays. All the, all the way there. Yeah, you can feel some of these bumps here. Alright. I'm gonna go set the black here. Go the other way, Trent. side, yep. film that's uh, on top of the concrete right now. We're going to be removing that and this basically the water just helps you um, remove this piece a lot easier. Yeah, it peels apart a lot easier. Just getting everything wet. So, I'm going to make sure your registration marks still stay there. Keep your registration marks in place. Especially when you're doing multiple colors, it's important you have that in place, which is this piece right up here. Right. That's the registration point, map point. air vent, right? And we want it on the opposite side, because if you have the nozzle here, right, okay, and you go to spray it, it's gonna drip out. Right. So you always wanna make sure it's on the back side so you don't have it dripped. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to spray? Then I just use a rag. You don't wanna smother this hole, but you just wanna kinda, just as a backup, you're not even really putting it around there. You're just, you're just holding it there. So Before you actually get it onto the concrete. So we'll start spraying it like here, and then we'll just, and you just wanna spray it like this. 
and then when you're done, you want to lift it back up, and that prevents from the dripping happening onto the actual concrete. So here you go. So remember, on the, con on the cardboard first, and then onto the concrete. And you want to be about like 10 or 12 inches away from the concrete. And then it's going to kind of reject the rest, and there's like a powder residue surface left on the concrete. What we want to do is scrub that off so that when we go to put the next layer down, we don't have smudges of the black on the new color, and or when we go to put the machine back on, we don't have color transfer onto areas that we didn't want color to go to. So we'll just bring this out, and you'll see. So that's, that dries instantaneously, it's acetone based. So then, see all that already? Tracer marks. Line all our registration marks up, make sure everything's nice and even across. That one doesn't have it. No, you wrote it. No, I ain't doing that. I just get in there, I wipe it down, it's hot. And I'm not gonna be, I'm not afraid, afraid of, I'm not gonna take, I don't wanna take the color off. Yeah. No, I want the color off. Mm. I want it to come, like, if it comes off right now, I gotta fall. Yeah. So if I go in there and I scrub it on. Thank you. 
All right, so now we're gonna put the sealer down. We're gonna do a nice thin, even coat over the whole floor. Um, two parts water, one part the sealer. I like to get the pad wet first. Um, So we're gonna work from this side all the way over. Can you turn that fan off for me? Alright, we'll just put it down there. There you go. Alright, so just go a nice thin even coat across the whole floor. I'm gonna have to spray it out a lot more than this. So it's drying on too quick. There you go. So just thin even coat all the way across, one or the other, not both. Start over here and work this way. No puddling, just nice thin. Anyways, uh, this finalizes the entire process of polishing uh, with the Extreme Polishing Systems process using all of our diamonds, using our densifier, using our sealer, using our Rolex burnishing pad on the, on the, uh, on the burnishing machine. Anyways, so what do you, you guys think about this whole process? Oh, it is a tedious process, but the end result is what it is. It's tedious, right? You have to you have to have patience. This is not for uh, anybody that does not have patience, and, and and you need to pay attention to detail. So a lot of times when people say, "Oh, I thought we could do it for X amount of dollars," they're saying they don't really know everything that goes into it. We went over this whole concrete ten different times. We used the 30 grit metals, 70, 120, then we went 50 resin, 100 resin, 200. 400. At 400, we colored the whole floor. We put down our logo. We then uh, densified the floor. Then we went 800, 1500, and 3000. So that's 10 different diamond tools that, that went over this floor. And then, of course, we put the sealer down and we hit it with the burnishing pad, which is actually your 11th pass on the floor. Right. Um, so, as you can tell, it does take a, a fair amount of time to do, but your end result, you're going to have a very low maintenance floor. There's no seams in it, you know what I'm saying? There's no, no grout lines to clean. You know what I'm saying? The maintenance here is what, is what people are really gonna appreciate, let alone the look, because the look is, is stunning. You can, you can do it tra for traditional, people that have traditional furnishings, people that have contemporary furnishings. You know what I'm saying? You can do it in a castle, you can do it in a Taj Mahal, and you can do it in your, your residential home, and it just makes a great floor. Um, but like I said, it, it, is, it is a tedious process. Yes, pain, painstakingly tedious. So always appreciate the people that are manufacturing your floor for you because every floor is unique in its own characteristics. As we saw, we had a couple little oil areas right here that, that had oil many years ago. This building's been here for probably 40 years and there was probably once a mechanic shop in here. And we didn't see this the whole time. The whole time we were cutting the floor, polishing the floor until we put the color down, did this jump out at us. You know, but it still it doesn't look bad because we've mixed a couple different tones in the concrete, and it, it actually looks like it's part of it. So it gives it unique characteristics. Anyways, thanks a lot for joining us today here on YouTube. I want to thanks again to Pascal, my friend here, and to Christopher. And I want to thank you for coming down and spending your week with us. 
Overall, tell me what you've learned from this whole process. I can see that. Um, would you like me to flip the question to Pascal? Pascal, what did you what did you get? What did you take away from this whole week with us? Well, first, um, I would never have imagined that we can go from um, a really dirty slab. And uh, there's a little area there that kind of shows how almost like a transition from like the really bad one we started with. And then, you know, we started grinding like, into this nice, reflective, colorful, um, you know, end product. It's really nice. Um, I think we can do a lot, um, you know, reaching out to people and introducing this. Uh, so overall, I'm really excited. Okay, can't wait to get started. Did we fulfill all of your uh, thoughts and desires when you got on the airplane and you guys flew over this way? Yes, it, yes, it did. Yes, we, it did. We did. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm quite happy with what we have ended up with. The knowledge we've got. Um, I feel like we can go through this whole thing from beginning to end. Um, so I think we're good to go. Awesome. So would you recommend this to anybody that's out there in YouTube land right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, like the mention, there's a, a whole number of steps that you have to follow. So long as you do the right things, um, I think there's no reason why you wouldn't end up with a fantastic flow like this. So I'd really recommend this for any other person that would like to get into this business. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks again.